All right, as you're looking at that infographic, extinct in the wild. What does extinct in the wild mean? Okay, they're only alive in captivity. What does captivity mean? Like zoos, basically, right? Zoos, aquariums, protected areas. So extinct in the wild means they're only found in captivity. In order to be endangered, how many individuals must be in the population size? Fewer than how many? 250. So as you're looking at this sheet, the different colors correspond with different um, categories. So critically endangered are red. So that would be less than 50 individuals. Endangered is less than 250. Um, so if you think about less than 250, that's not very many. So for example, the blue whale. There's less than 250 blue whales left. Um, so not very many. Uh, as you go from left to right, they get like less of a concern. So on the left-hand side, we've got extinct. That's obviously the worst. Least concern would obviously be the, be the best case scenario. So why do you think the polar bear is listed as vulnerable? Okay, losing habitat due to climate change. What about the elephant and the lion? Poaching, right? Because they're valuable. People want to kill them for their tusks or their fur. So we get a lot of poachers. We talked in my last class about poaching. Um, they were asking me, well, how does it even happen? Uh, basically, there are national parks. So if you go to Africa, let's say you go to Africa, um, there are national parks there, like the Serengeti you've probably heard of. The Serengeti is actually, we're looking up a map of uh, Wisconsin. So the Serengeti is about a fifth of the size of Wisconsin. It's 12,000 square miles. Wisconsin is about 58,000 square miles. So if we look at a map of Wisconsin here, I'm going to copy it and put it. So if we look at this, this is going to be blurry because it's a bad picture. But if we look at this map of Wisconsin, about a fifth of Wisconsin would be the size of Sering the Serengeti. Okay, So this is how big the Serengeti is. It's huge. It takes about three hours to move or drive by car from one side to the other. Okay, So the Serengeti is huge. And when you're thinking about the rangers, that's a lot of land to patrol. Imagine if you were in charge of all of the deer in that part of Wisconsin. It would be pretty hard to make sure nobody kills them. So in Africa, the rhinos and the elephants, they exist only in these national parks. And in these national parks, there are rangers, but there's not tons and tons and tons of rangers. I would argue we have way more police officers than there are rangers. So they can't monitor every single part of the park at every single given time of the day because it's huge. So um, a lot of times poachers end up getting in and they end up killing these animals for their horns or for whatever else. Tomorrow we are working on endangered species ornament. So I will be passing around this list. You need to put your name by whatever animal you would like to do. Okay. Okay, remember what you do if you are not going to be here tomorrow. You're going to need to finish this assignment on your own. I will give you the stuff for it today so everyone will have it today, but you're going to have to do it on your own if you are not coming here. Okay? I need you to get out your notes packet. If you were not here and did not get a notes packet yesterday, who needs one? Also, could you do me a favor and pass up the colored info sheets? Can you pass up from the warm-up? If you did not turn in your multiple choice or the um, niche packet yesterday, turn that into my basket. <laughs> So yesterday,
yesterday we talked about how there were different varieties of things, but that overall genetic diversity is declining. It's declining both in crops that we breed and in animals that are alive in the wild. So we have different categories here. I have an extra bullet point on your notes packet that's above this chart. Don't worry about that bullet point. I don't know what it's there for. Apparently I was delirious when I made it. So you have extinct. Extinct is the first word you have on your chart. I'm not having you write any definition for it because I'm assuming you know that extinct means there are none left. Zero left, gone, okay? The next one's extinct in the wild. So extinct in the wild means they're only found in captivity. So only found in captivity. We have critically endangered. So that's worse than just endangered, is critically endangered. Um, threatened is the same as endangered. So you'll hear both of those used interchangeably, threatened or endangered. That means they're likely to become uh, extinct in the future if things don't change. I'm also passing back your multiple choice. Remember, I it's based on completion, so I do mark which ones are wrong so you know, but it's based on completion. Use these to practice and study. Near threatened, likely to become threatened, okay, but it's not yet threatened. And then least concern means that they're widespread, they're abundant, we don't really have to worry about them. So we will look at different examples of these species. Um, for example, extinct, passenger pigeon, woolly mammoth, the moa, okay. Um, we have some that we know are endangered species or that we've heard talked about endangered, right? You may have heard about like bald eagle. That's technically not endangered anymore. It's actually made it to least concern, but it was endangered or threatened for a while now, or in the past. So species can also be locally extinct, meaning they can be extinct in just one space or in one area. So let's say, for example, there was like a rabbit population that's found in Wisconsin, and that rabbit population decreased, right? And there were no rabbits found in Wisconsin. But there were rabbits elsewhere. We would say it's locally extinct in Wisconsin because there aren't any found in Wisconsin. Next multiple choice. Who else did I just give a note packet to? Who was it here? That's the next multiple choice. So reminder, um, we're looking at a test next oh, next week, Friday. So it'll be on five and eighteen. Chapter 5 and Chapter 18, um, but they're not as in-depth as the other chapters we've been going through. No, no, probably 30. There's going to be a free response question on there too, but don't worry, I'm going to give you some ahead of time, and I'll pick one from the ones I give you. All right, so amphibians have the largest number of threatened species. We talked about amphibians because they have that permeable skin, that skin that's able to um, take in substances. So if there's pollution, they also require, they have a very specific range of tolerance. We talked about that yesterday. So amphibians have the largest number of threatened species.
So what are some problems then with identifying species? So problems with identifying threatened species, three different things. So not enough data. I talked yesterday about if I were to send you out into the forest and tell you to count how many species there were or what the population was, it would be pretty tricky. It would probably take a lot of time. And I don't think it would be super fun. So there's not a lot of data collected on these different species because it takes so much time and energy. So assessment is costly. Even if you had a whole team of scientists, it would still take a long time in order to monitor and count all of those species. Of the 10 million species on Earth, only 50,000 have been assessed for population decline. Okay. So they actually think that we've only discovered, that we still have yet to discover 86% of the species that exist here on Earth. So um, there's a lot of species left that we don't know about. A lot of insects, a lot of things deep in the ocean. So there's a lot of species that are still being discovered. They discover new species like every single day, especially in the rainforest, in the oceans. Mm -hmm. That's an <laughs> computer models. So they're looking at how many different species they find per day and the rate, and they can calculate it. I don't know. They have fancy little computer models. I don't know exactly how they do it. This is the last slide we'll do today. So what do we know about species that are prone to extinction? Okay. First of all, they have a specialized niche. So they have very specific habitats or ranges or behaviors that they can tolerate. So we talked about like a panda or a koala eating just bamboo or just um, eucalyptus leaves. Yeah, it has a blue whale there, Everglades kite. I don't know about the Everglades kite or the blue whale. Um, yeah, so narrow distribution. So found in limited areas, okay. Uh, apparently, the elephant seal is only found in limited areas. So if they are only found in a very specific region and something happens to that region, they're obviously going to be very prone to extinction. All right, they have fixed migration. So organisms that migrate typically are prone to extinction because um, they have very specific migratory patterns. And if something gets disrupted on that migratory pattern, or maybe they stop at a specific habitat along the way of migrating someplace, um, they're going to be affected. So especially with habitat loss, we'll read an article next week um, that talks about when habitats are loss, especially for these migratory birds, it affects how they uh, migrate and it can reduce their populations. They have small populations. We talked about how small populations have low genetic diversity. They don't have a lot of genetic diversity and um, as a result, they're more prone to extinction. Remember, species and populations are able to evolve really quickly if there's lots of genetic diversity. And if they have economic value to humans, if humans can use them, like we talked about rhinos, um, you know, lions, elephant for their tusks, if they're valuable to humans, they're going to be more likely to go extinct. You also see a couple other ones, uh, things on here that I didn't write down. Low reproductive rate, so they reproduce really slowly. Um, it's obviously going to take a lot more to build up that population. If they have really big territories, like a Florida panther, it needs a really big habitat. Well, if part of that habitat gets destroyed and it doesn't have that big habitat anymore, 
um, it's not going to be able to survive. And then feeds at a high trophic level, reason being it's got to have a lot of those uh, food chains intact at the lower trophic levels in order to survive. All right, uh, what I wanted to show you, I wanted to show you where I put the radon test. So I mailed it in this past weekend. I put it in on Wednesday um, and then I, on, uh, let's see, Friday I took it out and then I mailed it. So this is in the um, this is in the back part of the dressing room, like by the cafeteria. It's behind the cafeteria by the stage, and it's behind the dressing room. Oh my gosh, it's being so slow. Yeah, it's kind of like the beginning of a horror movie here. Yeah, so Fred the custodian let me go downstairs. So here's where we go. I know. You should just film a horror film here. And then there's this like rando door that leads into this like dirt pit, like weird thing. <laughs> so I was trying to get my flashlight to work, but my flashlight wouldn't turn on when I was recording it. And I was like, okay, well, whatever. Um, and so then I just, then I just like left, but I put the test in there. So yeah, that's in our school. So exciting. <laughs> All right, is the endangered species sign up still going around? Okay, so I'm gonna give you, um, well, first I'm gonna pass out, this is what you're working on today. Uh, it won't take you the whole time, or it'll take you just, you'll be able to get it done. You're gonna Google CNN vanishing species. You will get to a site that looks like this. It's an interactive thing, so it's kind of cool. Um, it says scroll, so just use the arrows. Um, so they have different graphs, they have videos. You don't need to actually listen to the videos because they write all the information. And it's just small little pieces of text so you don't have to read like a ton of different stuff. So I have a sheet that you just have to answer questions on. I'm also going to be passing around the ornament worksheet. So if you are not going to be here tomorrow, you need to do the ornament worksheet and make me an ornament on your own. Yep. So you will not get fun, listen to Christmas music craft day tomorrow with Ms. Frankson. If you want to bring any supplies in, you can. I will have lots of craft stuff here. I want it. I want it. You let me know. So if you get done with this web interactive, you guys can grab your computers. If you get done, you can start working on the endangered species ornament sheet. And that is it.